It's the Happy Families Podcast. It's the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. Once upon a time, I tried to do three loads of washing in one. Everything came out dirtier than it was because when you put too much in, too much in, you get lousy. Too much. You go, when you put too much in, you get mushy results. You get lousy <laughs> results. And now here's the stars of our show, my mum and dad. Every Friday on the Happy Families Podcast, we talk about what we're going to do better tomorrow. This is a moment of introspection. It's where the parenting expert and his wife, mum to six daughters, Kylie, uh, reflect, get intentional, talk about what went well, what didn't, and how we can do things better. Kylie, I think we should start with you. How would you approach today's podcast? How do you want to do things better tomorrow? Or do you just want to celebrate the fact that you've nailed it this week? Well, we've now been back at school for a week. Yeah. Yeah. And I have been reflecting on the holiday that was. Okay, yep, yep. And the acknowledgement that we really need you to slow down and be a part of our holidays. <laughs> and I know we joke about I, this a lot. I feel like you're about to uh, put me under the bus again <laughs> in this episode. Well, let's just say you didn't have a choice these holidays. No. You crashed and burned big time. All right. So, so a little bit of background. It's been an absolutely frantic uh, couple of months. We've had a brand new book come out. There's been the TV show. I had a trip to America for a big conference. And there's been all the usual stuff going on. And towards the end of term two, which is, I mean, we're going back three or four weeks now, but towards the end of last term, I could feel myself starting to crash. I could feel my my lungs not work properly anymore. I could feel my body starting to say, "Just stop." Uh, and, and, but we had we had a big night planned in Brisbane for we, we went to see Moulin Rouge. Then the next night we had uh, a wedding. A wedding. That you were MC. I for. was MCing, and then the next day you were. Uh, catering for a wedding for some friends. You said, oh, I'll do it. I'd love to try this. I'm going to give it a go. Uh, and, and so I, I could feel myself crashing and I almost pulled out of Moulin Rouge. You actually told me not to go. You said you were going to take your sister. I'm like, no, no, no. I really want to see this thing. And at Moulin Rouge, I could just feel my throat collapsing and, and dying. And then I had to hold it together for the wedding, which was, uh, well, well, I did. I, I, I think I did a reasonable MC job. And then the next day, it was Friday, and I was I was gone. I stayed in bed. I didn't move. And, and we you, were, don't, you don't get sick very often. No. And if you do get sick, it's a couple of days in bed, and you're back to um, life as we know it. I was so sick that on Tuesday, you went on holidays without me. You put the kids on an airplane. We booked this family holiday, and I just couldn't go. Yeah, so executive decision. <laughs> Um, but we decided that we would leave the sicko at home. I, I can't believe that we were in a position where this happened. I've, I, I've never even heard stories of this thing happening where the family goes off and leaves one of the parents at home because they're sick. Like, who does that? And you did it to me. I did it to you. <laughs> I did it to you. But, you know, there were a couple of things that came out of the holiday that were, were really big learning moments for me. Yeah. The first one is something that we've talked about a little bit on the podcast. I've let a lot of the holiday – planning up to you over the years. Of course. I'll do the activities. I'll work out what we're actually going to do there. But when it comes to hotels and airplanes and all of that stuff, the actual logistics of the travel, that's all up to you. I don't even think about it. I get in the car, we get to the airport, you get us on the airplane, you pick up the car. Like I don't think about any of that stuff. And so when I realized that I was all on my own, I knew that I was actually pretty much out of my depths. This is not a comfort space for me at all. And I was going to have to do it all alone. But I also knew that it was really important for our kids to number one, recognize that it was a challenge for me, but to see me do it in spite of the fact that I was a little bit nervous about it. Not to mention the fact that they needed a holiday too. Well, they did. They yeah. needed it. And so once upon a time, I probably would have just canceled the holiday. I would have just said, we're not going. Dad's mm. not well. We can't do it. But I was like, you know what? I'm a big girl. <laughs> I can do this. And so we decided to give it a go. Well, we got to the airport. Everything went smoothly. I parked the car for the week that we were gone. We got on an airplane. Everything was fine. We picked up a car at the other end. I got them to the Airbnb. And I said to them, girls, I said, I've never done this before. Like literally, dad takes care of all of this. I said, how did I go? 
And they all, one by one, they were like, oh, 10 out of 10, mum. <laughs> because I have done little bits in the past where I've, we've been stuck and I've had to do something. And the girls have watched me, even just driving to a new place. I get a little bit stressed out about it. And, and my energy might elevate a little <laughs> bit in those circumstances. And the last time I had been somewhere with my 19-year-old and I didn't know where I was going, she was kind of like, Mom, you're a bit of a stress head. <laughs> so it was really nice to be able to go through that process and to just be calm and know that I was capable and I could do it. So that was the first thing. The second thing was just one of the things that we've recognized over the years is that when we cram too much in to our holidays, we don't actually get to enjoy it. This is my washing machine analogy. For those who have missed the story, once upon a time, I tried to do three loads of washing in one. And I mean, the water didn't even go through all the clothes. Everything came out dirtier than it was because when you put too much in, too much in, you get lousy. Too much. You go when you put too much in, you get mushy results. You get <laughs> lousy results. So, uh, so there's a lesson in this for, from the holiday, I presume. Unfortunately, once we arrived at our destination, within 24 hours, Miss Emily crashed. Yeah, so she caught what I had. She got it and she <laughs> got it bad. So all of a sudden, we're now in a position where we're away from home. You're sick and not even there. Yeah. And I've got one child who is sick, 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 and a whole heap of kids that are dying to have a holiday. Yeah. So thankfully, we all brainstormed and we decided that one person each day would stay home with the sick child while the other family members go off and try to have a bit of a holiday. But as a result, it just meant that we had to really slow things down, like big time slow things down. So I just did a small activity in the morning, then we'd come home for lunch, make sure the sicko child was make okay. Sure the sicko child was okay. And then <laughs> go it. off again for another few hours in the afternoon. Yep. It's not how we would have normally done things. And definitely from a travel point of view, I was doing a lot more miles than I needed to do because of the logistics of making sure that baby number six was okay. But after a few days of doing it, the kids actually came to me and they said, I really like how we're doing this. I feel like we've slowed things down and we're just able to really be in the moment and enjoy this activity. No, we can come home. We've got a few hours where we can have some lunch, read a book, maybe watch a little bit of TV before we head off for the afternoon. <laughs> I'm laughing because I finally flew to where you were on Saturday just for the last three days and it's exactly the opposite. Once I got there, I was like, okay, let's go. we got lots to do. It was for long. Because life. you arrived, I knew that you were kind of trying to fit in as much of a holiday as possible in three days yeah. that we'd been planning for, you know, a whole week. And so just to kind of navigate the shortened period of time that we now had together as a family and the travel that was required for different places, I looked at it and said, okay, well, we're going to go an hour up the road. There's this thing, this thing, and this thing that we could do. Let's do them all. Let's just try and do them all because yeah. I knew that that's how your brain would work. That's exactly it. But we woke up the next morning <laughs> and everyone was just feeling a little bit blah. And so I said, you know what, let's revise it. Let's not do all of it. <laughs> but what did you say? I said, it'll be fine. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's jam too much in. <laughs> so the first two activities went beautifully. Yes, they did. We had a wonderful time. The last activity of the day was the one that I was actually just itching to do. Yeah. But we hadn't done a lot of homework. So when we got there, we recognized that it actually was going to require a little bit more of us than we had originally anticipated. And all of a sudden, all of the wheels fell off. Uh, in fairness, I said, let's pull the pin. You were a bit cranky about it because we were finally there and it was an hour and a half up the road from where we were staying. So we had to drive all the way back. The next day, I rescued it. I said, let's go. Let's do it. And we did. And it was the highlight of the trip. Can I just, can I just put that in there? Okay. <laughs> so what's your take-home message when it comes to family holidays? Is it slow down, don't put too much in, leave husbands at home? Like what's the take-home message here? <laughs> <laughs> For me, I think it was really just slowing down. Those first few days of the holiday, in spite of the fact that we weren't all able to be together. That, that's a huge thing. We yeah. weren't all able to be together. Yeah, it was a disappointment. But just recognising that you kind of had to make lemonade out of the lemons that we were given allowed us to have experiences that we otherwise wouldn't have had because we just had to reinvent the wheel for a little bit. But slowing down made all of those experiences that's that much more enjoyable. We actually really got to just take in that moment. And then the drive home, even if it was an hour, it didn't detract from it because we weren't trying to squeeze so much in. Mm. 
Mm. We kind of, you know, we're coming home. We still felt fresh, even though we'd driven an extra hour to do it. I feel like this take home message of don't try to cram too much in comes up a lot on the podcast. And yet it's a lesson that we need to be hearing again and again and again. This slow things down, take a leaf out of the Chris and Philippa slow parents from parental guidance book. There's, there's so much value in it. In terms of my I'll do better tomorrow, I'm going to share uh, j- just two brief ideas. The first is the creativity of kids. I love how creative our kids are. You've talked all about our holiday. Something that happened on the holiday and has continued since then is our kids developed, they, they invented a brand new game and it was so much fun. I so didn't want to play this. Like, I'm not into games at all anyway, and I just... We couldn't understand what they were trying to say in the first place. uh, They've come up with this game, though, and it was so much fun. So you need a fair few people to be able to do it. You'd want at least four people. So one person is chosen to be the questioner, and I guess you'd probably need people to be a a sort of eight and above to play this game. But one person is chosen to be the... They're just in. They're They're, they're they're in. Okay, so let's let's say I'm in. I've got to close my eyes and everybody else has to pick a number that they agree on between one and ten. A unified number. Yeah, yeah. So you might all decide that you're going to pick the number eight. And then my job is to ask each person who's not in, because I'm the one that's in, uh, how they would rank something. So I might say book or movie or food or holiday destination or whatever. And I'm and let's let's say say I asked you a book or a song or a band and the the number was eight. You would say I have to come up with a band that I would give an eight to that I would that I would rate as an eight. (laughs) And so we've got all these ratings. Like this person in the family sings at that number. So if it's eight, of course you're going to pick me. If it's ten, we're going to pick you. Yes, but we decided we weren't going to do things like that. Because <laughs> it got we? a bit personal, it didn't did. it? But it might be food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Or uh, dessert. Yeah, so it could be like lasagna is an eight, whereas, I don't know, sausage and, and mash is a three. But, but So there's no numbers. Yeah, no one gets to say the number. Everyone just has to say what that category would get. So they think about get. the category. Yes. They think about the category and they think about the number and then they come up with a food or whatever it or is. Or a book or a song or a movie that corresponds to, that to the number. Category in the that, category. That's exactly right. <laughs> so if that makes sense. And so now we're saying it and I'm thinking, how in the world did we play this game? But we got it and we played it for hours and hours. It was such so much fun on the long car rides. It was great on uh, the train ride that we took and on the sky rail trip that we took. It was great when we were just sitting in the – like it was so much fun. And, and what's great is watching just how the kids are able to pick – categories that is going to give them the best chance of being able to get the number right. It's so much fun when somebody's like, okay, so you've said lasagna and you've said the holiday destination is, I don't know, New Zealand or Bali or Sydney or whatever. And and they're, they're kind of integrating all this information about the meal and the book and the song and the holiday destination or the, the, the quality of friend or whatever it is. And then bang, they'll say eight. And everyone goes, no way. Like, what was amazing was if they didn't get it right, they were literally one mark away. Yeah, usually. Yeah, it was, it was, it was crazy. So, so just just kind of small moments. And that, that ties in with my, my real take-home message. And, and that is – so I'm talking about the holiday because for the last week I've been away. I left on Sunday, um, flew out to Sydney, uh, and I was working in Sydney at, at Sydney Grammar uh, doing some professional development for staff there on, on, on Monday. Then on Tuesday and Wednesday I was in the Illawarra region – and on Thursday, I was at Oxley College in the Southern Highlands. I've been all over the New South Wales countryside over the last week and haven't really been at home. But as I was thinking about that game and thinking about those small moments that we had, I kind of thought this week, one thing that I've done really well because I've been away is taken advantage of time confetti. You know, when you get those tiny little bits of paper, confetti, and they just settle down bit by bit, that's kind of what this week has been when it comes to my involvement with the family. Five minutes on the phone here, two minutes on the phone there, a quick FaceTime call in the morning, a quick good night call before I go and run a presentation or as I'm driving back to the hotel. And it's been those time confetti moments that have really, I think, um, been been the magic in the week, uh, kind of putting a positive spin on the fact that I've been away, which makes it super hard. So that's my older better tomorrow. Yours is don't stick too much in. Mine is uh, take advantage of the small moments and really celebrate them. Uh, th- that connection with your kids makes such a difference. 
We hope that that's a little bit of inspiration for your upcoming weekend. Uh, Good luck making your family happier uh, and being intentional. Hopefully, you'll be able to do better tomorrow as a result of the things that we've shared with you just now. The Happy Families podcast is produced by Justin Ruan from Bridge Media. Craig Bruce is our executive producer. For more information about making your family happier, visit us at happyfamilies.com.au. Oh, and a quick reminder as well, our uh, parenting ADHD course is about to start. It starts on July 31. If you haven't checked it out already, you can get all the details at happyfamilies.com.au and at Dr. Justin Coulson's Happy Families on Facebook. 